Hey everyone, this is the Home Light Cordless Electric uh, mower that I bought from Home Depot about three years ago. And it's actually a pretty decent mower, but it does have problems with the battery. And the, that is that the, the battery seems to be cooked by the charger um, within a few months after you start using it. And that's, uh, for me, that was about nine or uh, six to nine months. So what I decided to do was replace the stock lead acid with an off-the-shelf lithium polymer battery. And I figured I'd show other people how this was done in case other people ran into the same issue. So quick overview. Um, this is the mower. Basically, this is completely stock. And um, the only thing I've changed here is I've added a little piece of tape because this is where the um, handle folds down and it contacts the, the lid right here. And it, if I didn't tape it off, it, it would leave a mark. But to remove the battery, you just have to press a little latch on the back, and the battery comes right out. So this is the, the regular battery. It's quite big, it's quite large, but uh, it's easily removable. So I think this will be a, a good candidate for a, a redo. So I'll take a closer look at this, show you what modifications I made. Here's a closer view of the battery. Uh, this is sitting on a uh, mat here with a one inch grid, so you can kind of get a, an idea for scale. Um, like I said, this is a uh, lead acid battery. Um, there's two 12 volt lead acids in here, and together um, they make 24 volts. So when choosing a replacement battery, uh, I wanted something that had a voltage uh, pretty close to 24 volts. Um, I like lithium polymer batteries because their energy density means that they they can they can source quite a bit of current in from a very small package. And if you get a six cell battery, those are nominally between 22.2 and 25.2 volts. So what that looks like is this, and as you can tell, there's quite a bit of difference in the. Uh, the size and what you can't tell is that there's quite a bit of difference in the weight as well. This weighs maybe a little over a pound whereas this one weighs several pounds. So the plan here is to remove the lead acid from here and install in its place this lithium polymer battery. And uh, if that doesn't happen to be enough capacity to mow the entire one then I can uh, I can double up or even triple the number of, lead, of lithium polymers in there uh, to increase my uh, my range on the mower. So pulling this part is actually pretty easy. There's eight screws that hold this plastic compartment on. Um, I actually went ahead and removed six of them. There's only two screws to pull apart which makes this come apart pretty quick. So there's one. And there's two. So, one thing to be mindful of when you're pulling this thing apart is that this latch back here actually has a spring on it. Um, two springs, as a matter of fact. Uh, so, be mindful of that so that the springs don't shoot across the room when you pull it apart. Mine already has these springs removed, so I don't have to worry about it. This simply comes off. As you can see, this is a perfectly fine part to reuse so I will be reusing this in order to make the uh, the mower look more stock when it's all finished. Put that there for now. Um, this is the case where the lead acids belong. Obviously mine are missing. I've already disposed of them but uh, two 12 volt lead acids go here and you tie them in series and you end up with 24 volts. That connects to the main power plug which goes on the front. Uh, these use a little um, um, connectors just straight to the battery so there's nothing special inside. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse this connector here. So I'll take this one off real quick uh, just like the lid. I'd already pulled one screw out so this comes off really quick. So there's a connector, reuse that, and then this is the empty box. What you may have also noticed is that there is a power connector next to the main power lug and that's uh, basically used for charging this battery if it was not sitting in the mower. Um, this doesn't connect to anything when it's in place and 
there's really no purpose for it when I install the LiPo battery, so I'm just going to ignore it for now. Um, so, uh, this is what we started with, this is where we're going. Uh, in order to package this battery in a useful way, I went ahead and drew this box up in CAD and made some modifications to it. Using a 3D printer that I have available to me, I went ahead and printed a copy. So, this is obviously a lot shallower, and the idea is that I can use it to place my battery in. Now I can put two or three of these in here, and it's a lot less um, volume than the original and it weighs a ton less as well. So what you might notice is that this one is actually a little different. This is oriented, these are both in the same direction now. Um, I went ahead and closed the top and the reason for doing so is so that I had a place to put the lithium polymer. So this end will actually fit flat against the inside of the lid. So closing it gave me a place to put to, uh, my sticky tape or my velcro or straps or whatever the, whatever I'm going to end up using inside so when the whole thing's turned over it'll actually look closer to something like this this will allow me to pull the battery out for charging or to just put it on the desk and charge it just like you see it here so that was that modification this one actually doesn't fit and I'll tell you why it's because when I drew it up in CAD, I accidentally moved these too far out, so it doesn't match up with the original holes, so this one doesn't actually fit. I'll have to reprint this piece uh, before I can continue on. But the idea is, when you get the batteries inside, there's a hole up here on the front, so what we'll do is we'll fish this cable through to the other side where the batteries are, and then I'll attach the main power connector here, and this whole thing will fit right on top of the existing mower with no modifications and uh, to anybody walking by any of the neighbors it would look just like the stock mower except it has a little bit more power um, uh, extended endurance and it's a lot lighter so it'll be easier to push around the, the lawn uh, just for for notes um, this battery here is a zippy 5000 milliamp hour battery it's a 20c uh, it's a 6L like I said so it's 22.2 volts nominally um, 20C means we're going to get about 100 amps out of this battery. Uh, so this battery has a little bit more uh, current source than the original lead acid batteries, but um, it's obviously quite a bit smaller. Uh, compared to the lead acid that was in there before, this is actually just about the same runtime. Um, that was sufficient for the lawn that I have. Although, as the lead acids kind of wore down, uh, I got less and less mowing done. Um, this one doesn't wear down nearly as fast, um, mostly because of the charger. And this seems to cover the same amount. So, if I had a bigger lawn and this was already too small, then I could double this up and I essentially doubled the original spec on the, uh, for the battery. So, I'm going to throw these all together on the mower and I'll show you kind of how it works. Alright, so we're back at the mower. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the plug. That's the main connection. It goes in just like that. We've got the lithium polymer battery. I'm using the XT90 connectors. This is uh, pretty easy to connect. I like the XT90s because they're a little larger. Makes it a little easier on your fingers. Uh, and that goes on just as you see it there. Now, if we wanted to add a second battery, um, probably use just a Y cable. This way we can use uh, any two batteries that we have on the shelf, as long as they're the, the right, the same voltage. Um, this will allow me to connect two batteries together without any special modification. So this cable just goes between those two. For circuit protection, uh, I guess it doesn't really protect you, but it kind of gives you some awareness of where your battery is. Um, I'm going to install a little battery monitor. And this one has an audible alarm to it. So what this does is it basically lets me know if I'm getting towards the, um, the last part of the battery. I don't want to over discharge this battery because bad things can happen when you do that. So if I hear that alarm while I'm mowing, 
I know it's a good time to shut down and recharge. But this is essentially how the the whole thing goes together. At this point, it's it's ready to run. When I finish making my enclosure, um, this will all sit in the enclosure, and the enclosure will be mounted to the lid, and then the whole thing goes together like that, and the mower looks entirely stock. And we want to run it, and it runs just fine. This actually has a little bit more power than the original. Uh, in the summer, I tend to let my lawn go a little bit, and the, the grass can get quite high, and this thing just cuts straight through it. Um, the home light also has a voltage display on the underside here. And while that display is still useful, it's not quite accurate anymore since full charge on this on the old battery was 24 volts and a full charge on this one is 25 it's probably not going to line up the way it used to, so I really don't use it much. I pay more attention to the monitor inside. But that's basically the whole shebang. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, I'm going to try and include a couple links in the description so that you can access the full write-up here. and You can see a circuit diagram, so everything seems to make sense as far as adding more batteries and you know how things connect. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know, and I'll, I'll try and answer those, and uh, that's everything. Uh, hope you enjoy this.